Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you love no code, you're in the absolute right place because in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to something which is coming very soon called Back End Flow. Now this, in my opinion, is an absolute game changer. It, you just quite simply just tell it what you want and it will create an API service for you and it and then allow you to deploy it and make it available to your application. I've got plenty of examples coming up so we'll walk through them very, very soon. But what is the idea of backend flow? Well, the idea of it really is it's adding key functionality into your toolkit. So we know that no code application development tools generally can only take you so far at this current time. The idea of this particular product is it allows you to then introduce these back-end services to increase the functionality of your application. Now, of course, depending on, on what you want. So there's no need to actually package up these APIs. Um, you just simply just hit a deploy button and then they're instantly available, which is just absolutely fantastic. You don't need to lift a finger and try to come up with and think, oh, how do I get these things deployed out into the cloud? You can do it straight from the tool. And you can also test them as well. So you can just um, create the API, you can have a quick test make sure you get the output that you want and then you can then start adding them to your no code development experience and of course if you are interested in a little low code so you might want to kind of do a little bit of tinkering with the API that it generates. You can do that as well. And I've got some examples where um, I'll just tinker with the API and then redeploy it again. And then, of course, that additional detail will be available. So I think, in my opinion, looking at it, it's specifically being developed for no-code application builders. And we know as, um, generally as no-code uh, application builders, we want to write as little code as possible. Um, so this service is fantastic for that. And, of course, all of the APIs are sort of situated under one roof. If you don't need to go and pull all these services from different places, you just have them all with inside your dashboard um, and then you know they're then safely in, in one location, which makes it really, really easy. So I think we're on to demo time. So um, I've got some examples that I've kind of got prepared that I'm going to kind of just chuck at, chuck at it and um, let's see what it comes up with. And um, hopefully you'll agree that it's definitely a very, very valuable service. And of course, um, what I do encourage you to do is, of course, is go in, get your name down in on the back end flow website, get yourself registered and the service will be available real soon. So without further ado, let's crack on with the demo. So there we go. So I've just logged into the dashboard. Don't be alarmed at what you're seeing on the screen. It's very, very simple in nature, but that's the good thing about this. All the noise is taken away. So it's asking me for an API prompt. So I'm just going to hit and put a just a sentence in here, write a function which returns a list of American states. Really straightforward. Hit the generate and it will go away and it will do its thing and probably take about 30 seconds for it to generate the API for us. Okay, so there we go. What you're seeing on your screen at the moment is the function that it's generated in there without counting them. I'm assuming there's 50 states in there. I'm pretty sure there is for all the American states. Um, of course, up here, you can change the function information. You can change the function name as well. And um, we've not got no parameters that we're passing in, but hold your horses. We're going to do that in just a second. And the idea is that this particular uh, sort of API response is going to bring back a list of strings. Now, all I've got to do now is simply hit the deploy API button. Hit that and the API will then instantly be deployed and it will give you some further details then about the API endpoint that you need to access in order to uh, get those results back. So we'll do that in just a sec. So we go, the API has been generated for us, now deployed out onto the web and it's now ready for me to now use. The great thing about this is that I can just hit the little test button here, hit test, and it will just quickly fire the, uh, the actual API request. And you can see here that I'm getting all the results back absolutely fantastic so of course let's just mix up a little bit let's now just extend this function just a little bit more so i'm just going to with inside this block here put a new api prompt in so i'm just going to level it up a little bit more i've put it in a new prompt so let's hit the generate option it's going to go away and regenerate this api for me oh this is beautiful okay so what it's done is return me back now a more complex um, sort of function here, but this allows me now to actually pass in some parameters to the actual function. So uh, let's just quickly deploy it. You can see here that it's actually now going to pass in some initials. So this allows us just to key in a couple of characters here, and it should be able to then filter down on the uh, the state. So if I put like um, a L in, it will just then should return me back Alabama and Alaska. Let's give that a go. So just down here, let's just type in uh, a L. Hit test. And I've got none. So if I put now AL in like that, 
I should then get the two come back. So you can see there that it's um, is working really, really well. Of course, you could come up here now and you could just make some adjustments to this particular sort of function if you wanted to. You can make some code enhancement, then redeploy and away you go. So that's just one example. Now let's mix up. Let's make it a little bit more complex. Let's put another example in and let's challenge backend flow. So this time, write a function which returns a list of restaurants near me based on my location and the type of restaurant. So hit generate. So there you go. The um, the API has been generated. This is looking fantastic. This is, lo is looking like a, a Google API call, which is fine. It's no problem at all. You don't need to necessarily call the API directly from Google. You could use a service like this and it could act as by way of a proxy. So you can kind of make some little adjustments to it and then call out to. It's asking for a Google Places API key. Now, I just happen to have a API key, which I'm just going to pop in there. Let's now deploy. There we go, so our API has now deployed. Now, I don't wanna key in the latitude, the longitude, and the restaurant type. Let's use GPT here. We're gonna describe what we want it to do and let it then call the uh, the API with it. So I'm just gonna paste some text in here. I'm gonna say, try it out with a random longitude and latitude location using Chinese as the restaurant type. Let's give this a go, test with GPT. Just gonna give that a moment to invoke the API. So there we go. So the parameters it's passed in is some latitude, longitude. I have no idea where that is. And here we can see, oh, it looks like a San Francisco. And you can see now that we've got some names and addresses of some output from the, the Google API. So great little example there on using that. Let's move over to example three now. Right, let's start a brand new API call in this example. So write a function which gets a five-day weather forecast for a city which is passed in by a query. Hit generate. So there we go, function created. Now I have an API key here, so it's using the open weather API. So let's just uh, paste that API key in there. So that's looking pretty good. Let's hit deploy and let's hopefully, fingers crossed, that gets deployed good and we can then chuck a city at it and let's see what it comes back with. So API deployed, let's hit the test button. Let's see what happens. Oh, fantastic there we go there's our result so it looks like we have a five day forecast there for sydney so perfect if you're looking to build a like a mobile weather app then this is a great great solution it kind of brings you back all of the details that you would expect to consume in your application so let's chuck another example at it so let's go again. So write me a function which using the pexels.com api return back a list of pictures on a topic i'm interested in hit generate Okay, so there's our API created. So let's just paste in the API key. There it is. Just hit deploy API. There we go. API deployed. Let's just do a search, type in street, hit test. There it is. Fantastic. We've got a lot of images come back. So um, this is great. And of course, we can then have a look now, of course, at the uh, the actual uh, the Pexels um, documentation, of course, and we can um, sort of extend this application. We can add more detail actually in the response or the data that we're actually looking for. So, you know, this is just a very, very simple example here of just returning that information back. So let's just um, chuck another example at it now, and then we'll take that example into Flutterflow and see how easy it is to hook on to the, uh, the APIs. So this time, write me a function which returns a fake reviews, which include a title, random star rating, an avatar image, and a description for the review. So this is an idle example that if you're looking to stub out your, your no-code application with just some test data or something like that, or as you sort of build up your application, then you can use this tool to be able to do that as well. So you can just shape something up to how you need it inside the UI. There we go. There is our detail. Just hit deploy. So it looks like the code looks pretty good to me. It looks like it's going to create a title, a star rating from one to five. Got an avatar image in there as well and a description, which is, looks like it's just some, uh, some lorem text. So let's just hit the test option and let's see what we get. Excellent, perfect. We're getting there a list of sample data. So that's brilliant. So of course we can now take this particular API into our no code tool and we can actually now flesh out the, the, the UI. But just before we go, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a bit of a tour of the, of the actual screen that we've got here. Now this is really simplistic in nature, of course. That's fine. That's no problem at all. Up the top here, we've got our endpoints and go to your endpoints. And you can see here that our endpoints are kind of listed here. Of course, we can just delete these. 
if we don't want them so um, which is really really great and um, of course you can then click on any of these particular endpoints that you've created previously like the you know the search by topic you can then bring those back it, it fills in the details for you and of course you can then make changes to these particular endpoints the other thing they've got up here is your keys. Uh, now, speaking to the team at Backend Flow, they're going to be working on this particular area, which will allow you to um, sort of preload the system up with the API keys that your APIs are going to use. And of course, you could then hook those actually into the APIs. You can kind of keep all of your keys in one place and then just reference them with inside your API. So um, that is perfect. And um, what a fantastic solution. This is going to save so much time when we're trying to uh, sort of put these services into our no code application. One thing I do say is that actually the, the pricing model that the team at Back and Flow have got is really, really good. In fact, there's a free tier which will allow you to actually have five free API endpoints. So that is definitely well worth um, using the service for. And of course, but it's really, really affordable, very, very cheap to kind of um, um, what they describe as almost unlimited API. So uh, definitely have a look at the, the homepage of the website and do get yourself on the on the list there. And uh, I'm sure they'll be in touch with you guys soon to uh, to give you access. So um, let's move over to Flutterflow now and let's now just use one of the APIs. Let's use the generate fake reviews one. Um, so if you want to see how it works, then uh, please do stick around and we're going to go and do that now. So here we are in Flutterflow. So I'm just going to create a brand new project. I've just called it review example. And then let's just hit the create blank option here. So it's just going to create a brand new project with inside Flutterflow. Let's just hit start building. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a brand new page here. OK, so just hit the little new page option here. So let's just type in reviews up here. Here's a reviews list. Let's just use the template theme so we can keep the styling and just call it this uh, reviews like that. Hit create page. And then let's just delete the home page there. We don't want that one anymore. So just hit delete and we've just got the review. So let's quickly now change this application here. Let's just collapse some of these here and I'll show you how easy it is to get this working. Let's just delete the, the two containers there. Let's just cut those out. Well, let's first move over to the API. So just hit the little API calls option here. Let's hit add and let's add an API call. So I'm just going to call this API call, say reviews. Um, the request now into the backend flow system is going to be a post request. That's what they support by default. So I just need to go back over here and do, do a copy of the generated API go back to Flutterflow let's just paste that actually in here and um, we'll call it reviews that's fine um, the body we do because it's a post request we do need to pass the body in so we just simply just need to take this actually let's just copy that go back over to our sample just choose JSON uh, and we're just going to paste that in there that's all that we need to do so we can go to response and test here uh, oh got a formatting oh I can just take that out there just go back to response and test hit test API call and then you should see that we get um, the data back, which is great, which is just what we're going to need. So just go down to the bottom here. You can go to look at the JSON paths as well that get produced here. It's giving you some examples that we can actually use. We're going to use this particular one here. So um, our route into our data is going to be um, dollar dot result, which is mapping to the result up here. So by just choosing that, it means it keeps our paths with inside Flutterflow quite more simplified when we're actually routing down to putting out the title star rating and stuff so just choose selected here and you'll go back here to selected and you'll see that that's now selected and I'm just going to simply just call this uh, reviews like that and then just hit add call so everything is now set up that's perfect with inside Flutterflow just hit save and we are good so let's move now over to the UI let's just quickly just knock out the UI so we're just going to use this particular area here. So I'm going to show you how simple this is. If you're not familiar with Flutterflow, I'll just show you how easy it is to make that API call. So we've got the container here, which contains the pretty well much the shape of what we actually need. I'm just going to wrap the container with inside a list view. So just choose list view here. So we're now ready to now have a repeatable list of containers. So once with the list view selected, we just need to go up to this option here for backend query. We're going to say add backend query, go to query type and we're going to choose API call and here we're going to choose the reviews this is what we just set as that selected uh, in the actual JSON path here just choose reviews and that's all that we need to do hit confirm with inside the children this is now going to allow us to choose a re uh, an actual variable name so I'm just going to simply call this review and we're going to choose this here and we're going to say it's actually the reviews response so this is the response of the API 
um, the call that we're actually making. Just need to go to the custom path, sorry, and choose reviews and then just hit the confirm option there. Just hit confirm, hit OK, and you'll find out that we'll get this look inside Flutterflow. It looks like this is a dynamic um, sort of widget on the screen. As you can see here, this is a list view for repeating these. So we can now go in here and we can now map these to the values from the JSON response. So if we go back to backend flow, you can see when we actually test this, We'll just lift this to test. You can see here that we're looking for title, star rating, avatar, image, and description. So we can just quickly, I'm just gonna go and quickly now map these to the field. So that's done by just going to up here, selecting this and choosing the review item because review is the variable name that we used. Uh, we're just gonna choose JSON path and we're just gonna say title and hit confirm. The avatar image, we can just go there now, go down to the asset type, it's a network call. Just go back to backend flow, have a look at the name there. It's just called avatar image. So just go back here, go to the path, go to the review item, which is the variable name, go to JSON path and just do dot and then the avatar image, just hit confirm. Now we can do this as well on the description. If I remember rightly, that was just dollar description. So just say re review item. We can then say JSON path and we can just say description like that and hit confirm. And then we just need that need to handle the star rating. Right, let's click on the star rating here. Just choose that, say a review item and we wanna say JSON path and I think it was star rating as the value. Just put a default variable in here as zero, hit confirm, and then we should be good. Now it's likely that we might find here, we've got a column. Okay, we might get a, an issue here where we get a, a boundary issue. So let's just make sure that we expand that out there so we can then get a wrap with, with our title. So let's head over to test mode now, let's try it out. So there we go. Um, that's pretty well much everything hooked up. We've got our titles, we got our avatar image, and there's clearly something wrong with the avatar image there. So it's probably the fake data that's probably not really linking to an image. Uh, so, but everything else is working good for us here. So you can just see there how easy it is just to use backend flow there to give us some sample data that we can just use in our application. So there we have it guys, hope you found that really, really useful. Um, thank you so much to the Backend Flow team for inviting me to try out their platform. Really, really excited by it. I think it's got a great future and I'm gonna monitor it and I'm also gonna bring you updates on the channel as they introduce new features as well. And of course, I'll also be using it as well throughout various sort of tutorials and stuff like that with inside um, the channel. So of course, please do like the video if you do like what you've seen here and please do subscribe to my channel if you're really really interested in the no code space and um and please do also check out loads of other content on my channel um in particular of course around flutterflow as well because that is a platform that is the favorite of them all for me when it comes to no code application development so of course until the next one everybody we'll see you real soon